Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Yeah, how y'all? How y'all? How y'all? Uh, y- y'all is fine. Y'all? Yeah. yeah. How, how y'all? <laughs> Y'all's all good? Howdy. Uh, wine's already kicked in. <laughs> I wish. I really wish. Are we doing this? Let's think, do this. I think we Let's are. do this. Yep. Yeah. It's been a while. Hi, everybody. I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And this week we have... Hi, my name's Laura. Back. Well, that was an enthusiastic Laura. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, Laura, that was fun. Fucking Laura, what do you want from me? <laughs> Gosh. And clearly, this was just a terrible movie. I mean, we all hated it, right? It was pretty bad. I No, I, I was just joking. I fucking love this movie. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It, uh, oh, hey, we're doing Goonies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I I think you had to come to this movie as a child for whatever reason. This movie never came on my radar as a kid. I was say that this is this was like your first time seeing this movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I watched it just before we did this podcast about three hours ago. And uh, no, I mean <laughs> that was a nice. It, it's, pause. It's, it's like early Home Alone with a party. I mean, it's just it's not it's not good. No, I disagree. <laughs> That was an enthusiastic. I, I just, it's, 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 it's Tell us and, more, Matthew. I want to know. <laughs> yes, yes, please. All the human interactions were very unbelievable. I mean... It's a kid's movie. Well, yeah, I got that, but... <laughs> it's a kid's movie from, like, 1983, so, I mean... 85. Yeah, it was It was still not not great. Okay. <laughs> I mean... It was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was pandering. I'm not a fan of adults don't understand movies to begin with. There was... All kinds of like mild eighties sexism and racism. Mm-hmm. I just it was it was eh. I understand the eighties were a different time, but you know, I, I still eh. Mm. It was all right, I guess. So you're gonna but, be a curmudgeon on this this whole Oh this no, whole Matthew's podcast. being a curmudgeon. <laughs> 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 Something new? new is happening. <laughs> no, I mean it just um you literally had to have seen this when this was new and bright and wonderful because it's not now. It's it's really not. It's yeah, it's, really not that new and bright and wonderful. It's, it's I have a significant amount of nostalgic weird. love for this movie. I think I've seen this movie almost twenty times. Most of those in the theater, I I love it. But I'm very interested in hearing more about why you didn't like it and the things as we go through this. Yeah, that just it it there was I no, was no grabbing point. <laughs> no grabbing nurture point or neuter. Nurture. I only I only <laughs> smiled like twice during the movie, and that was in the beginning when one of our heroes was abusing the maid. Oh, oh that was Feldman. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when he was terrifying the the, the day worker. <laughs> you know? okay. One of the best parts. So the, the kids are all in in obviously in junior high uh, yeah. at this point. Middle I, school. Yeah, junior high. It was called junior high where I grew up. Okay, it wasn't called middle school. I didn't have junior high. We had middle school. Yeah, yeah. it was called junior high. Yeah, Choya junior high. We don't really have those up here. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> okay, middle school. All right, fine. <laughs> uh, Did you have high school? Yeah. So you had junior high and then high school. The naming concept yeah, bothers grade me. Sc- grade, I know, right? Eight, right. Yeah, grade school. And junior high and ended then, in ninth, right? No, junior high was seventh and eighth grade. So that's strange. Because Let's I take know it people British and then you have different high. forms. Yeah, we had, we had kindergarten through six and then seventh and eighth as junior high and then high school was ninth through twelve. What? Yeah, that's seventh weird. and eighth? Yeah. So yeah, our junior, junior our, our middle, my middle school was six through eight. You? Yep. Yeah. But I know people who have had a junior high and junior high ninth. was seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So everybody does it differently. Yeah. Where, where are you from? Uh, well, born here, but I grew up in Phoenix. Okay, so you so. went to school in Phoenix. Yes, I went to school in Alabama. You uh, outside Seattle, Laura, Portland, here? Oregon, Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so, so I, I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> I took <laughs> I took Spanish in junior high, like in seventh grade. It was required, but no one was that proficient at that age with it. So maybe he was just a better student than you are. 
I highly doubt that. He's wait, wait, that he proficient seems smart. What Spanish? As a as a as a, as a, as a, as a, as a white kid yeah. in junior high, too smart, there's, almost evil, okay. malevolent. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's Astoria. There's not much going on there, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> well, except for kindergarten. Cops. And that's '80s yes. Astoria. Yeah. <laughs> Having been to Astoria recently, recently, I, that's it's changed. way no, it's bigger. It's bigger, but nothing really has yeah. changed. It, it's still a coastal town. Yeah, I haven't been there in a couple of years. I understand it's boring as shit. Yeah. Yep. Unless you're a vacationer or you own a vacation home. Yeah, and the only like thing to do in town is to deal with vacationers. It's or to go in Goonies obnoxious. tours. Yeah, yeah. Oh. In which apparently the owner of the house is like, "Fuck you, go away." They I know, put right? Tarps on the windows. Yeah, they put tarps over the whole house, pretty what, much. Okay, right? so that's one of those properties that you own for a reason. Oh, that's fantastic because the the whole f- movie was to. Sorry. <laughs> the whole All right, premise the whole premise of the movie Audio was book. to save the house and it ruined the house. That makes me happy. Well, it's, it's like those people that move into a hip neighborhood in town. They want to move right next door to their bar. Their Goonies gentrification. Bar. And then they have a kid and then they call and complain to the cops about how loud the bar is. I'm like, you moved here for a reason. You bought the Goonies house for a reason. Come on. Like, don't be a curmudgeon. I think at the point in which they bought the house, it wasn't a complete cult classic. It was a classic, but it hadn't hit that cult level where everyone's, oh, God, it's 30 years. We have to go see the house again. Let's I'm, play a, you know. I'm wondering if it's the same people that have owned it for a long or if it's changed hands a lot. I it's think changed, it's changed hands. I don't know about times. classic. I mean, like, NeverEnding Story is a classic. Labyrinth is a classic. Goonies is a classic. Why? Why? We'll fight Goonies you outside. Why? You can fight me here, <laughs> boy. classic you just never saw until today. Yeah. But why? So, where, where's, where's, so where's when you're love? 70, why? when you're 70, it'll be a classic for you. Why? Why, why, why do you love it's it? It's going to be so a much? classic hate film. <laughs> there's, there's, there's better pirate movies. Hook was a better pirate movie. Why? Why? Where's Hook your was, love? Hook was from the '90s. This is an '80s. Pirate there's five movie. years difference. Yes. Where, where's the love, though? I mean, was it just where it hit you? Was it kids overcoming all obstacles despite what the adults do? What, what, where's Where's the magic? Just one, for me, it was just one of those movies that I grew up with. It's just kids on an adventure. Yeah, I saw adventure. bad movies growing up, and they weren't a cult classic. Flight of the Navigator was shit. Okay, did you? <gasps> Hold on. Did you ever see Monster Squad? Oh, no. that movie sucks. Okay, what? hold on. See, <laughs> Monster Squad, I saw it as a kid mm-hmm. and I loved it. Most people I know that saw it as adults are like, oh, I want to hear, I want to see why. And they're like, this is awful. And I understand why. It's not a good movie, but it's fun. Remember okay. when we went and back and did Transformers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll agree with you that, that Monsters, that the Monster movie, Monster Squad, is fun. I just have like a knee jerk PTSD reaction to it because my ex girlfriend loved it and made me watch it like twenty times. So now I'm like, no, get that piece of shit out of my viewing range. But 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 it's a kids on an adventure movie. Yeah, and of the time, The Goonies was the kids on an adventure movie. Like, can you think of any others that that are of that level? Stand by me. That's not kids on an adventure. That's Kids on ruining adventure. their childhood <laughs> with PTSD. I would say most most movies are yeah aimed at that demographic or that kids on an adventure. Sandlot. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Sandlot. Sandlot. That's an adventure yep. movie that's with kids. Yeah, and and yeah. There's, and there's yeah. the prequel to Home Alone. I could give two shits. There's a prequel. Yeah, no. it's called The Goonies. <laughs> oh. <God. laughs> No. Look, we make up all these little clever traps. No, because it was, it was kind of like, you what know, movie like, run, like Goonies was basically, to me, it was, was like running my first few D&D sessions on my own. I'm so, so sorry. I, I was like <laughs> 10. No, I was E.T. Kids on 85. So yeah. I did you was like E.T.? eight years yes. old. But when did you see it? Uh, the era that you guys saw it. But that's okay. not a pandering. I can go back and see it today. And it's still technically a good movie. Nope. I can't do it. E.T. sucks. <laughs> Said it. You guys are great. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, I'm not going to push you on it. I think. Oh, yeah, I, I, I can. Yeah. I can get pushed. I mean, it's. Uh, it's. It's just. It's not good. Objectively, it's not a good movie. Which, which is odd because, I mean, this. It's a Richard Donner film. Which and what's Spielberg, a Richard Donner? A uh, Richard Donner is like <laughs> Superman. Precious. Who you know the original Superman. Also, movie. not a good movie. 
Okay, I'll, I'm with you on that. I didn't like the original mm. Superman. Superman 2 is where it's at. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah I'll yeah. agree with that. Yeah. All Superman right. 1, where he turns the planet back in time by, by going around what it. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, it was no. also, but I can see the internal logic because nothing would work in the Goonies. I mean, those kids are dead. And, those kids and, are dead, 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 dead. And this movie was written by Chris Columbus, who wrote the, the first few Harry Potter movies. Among others, well, which it's aren't good the best to see he's series. grown. <laughs> and then, <laughs> because was, this is his roots, he's done better. And then Spielberg, you know, produced by Spielberg. Yeah. So, and that we don't need to talk about. Who Spielberg. makes a cameo in the Cindy Lauper video for the mm-hmm. song? <laughs> yeah. Also, the, yeah, this movie was basically a Cindy Lauper video montage. Well, that and there's Domino's so many- and Pepsi. Yes. <laughs> there's so much Domino's and so much, so much Pepsi. Mm-hmm. Okay. So moving back to positive things, <laughs> yeah. uh, Dusty, tell us more about this movie that we have been <laughs> arguing about for the past, I don't know how many minutes. Well, I, Goonies was at least 10, at least 10. <laughs> so Goonies, uh, you know, also spoilers. I'm sure I, Unlike, you know, Matthew, who've already seen it up until today. Vader is Luke's in, father. Just in case okay. there are spoilers. <laughs> this movie is like 38 years old. Or yeah. Something. I would say it's if old. you haven't seen it until yeah. now, there might be an issue. But we're we're sitting next to somebody that didn't see it until earlier today. So I, I could have not seen it and been just as happy. This this movie was trash. Was, it, was this a waste of two hours of your time? Yeah, an hour and yeah. fifty seven minutes. And yeah, you can it was... send your messages to Matthew at <laughs> halfmovieswheelgame.com. No, Bring it, defend not... your shit movie to me. I don't <laughs> care. Leave it in the comments. Please. That is not Leave currently an actual email address, but as soon as we finish recording, I'm going to make it one. Cool. So the party is living up in Astoria, Oregon, and they're gonna. I never really understood if they were going to lose just their house or if it was every like the whole. Area. I didn't get that either. Fifty houses. Fifty were houses. Gonna be gone. Okay. For this golf cart. So course. most of Astoria. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so most of Astoria was going to be wiped out in a a corporate takeover of the entire place. Uh, the kids find a bunch of uh pirate treasure so type stuff in the attic from uh, his dad's uh uh curating days and they find a map as any good adventure story begins with God a map damn, right and a bronze key or a no a copper key and they go on their adventure almost dying several times to find the they should have been dead lost they should have been so of dead the worst named pirate in existence the one-eyed willie i will say that that is a very bad name for a pirate i was a kid and i didn't get the reference as a pseudonym yeah. for dick older. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dick yeah. donner they, hey. yeah richard donner yeah i was going to say they actually explained it in the in the movie like quick like well, what's under well, the yeah, badge yeah. so i mean yeah. explained it well, explained it but it was just going back and watching it again as an adult. Like, well, the 13 year old in my head is they like, have to throw eh, some biscuits funny. to the adults who have to endure this movie who didn't want to see it. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> and it was half a chuckle. <laughs> one eyed Willie. Yeah, so, Willie. I mean, they do it in any movie nowadays. Oh, any Disney true. movie. There are some definitely over the top. That was funny. I don't know what that meant. And the adults are like, oh, dear God. There was a lot of that in Shrek when Shrek came out, which was great. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about it and I'm, I get it. I get it, Matthew. That's awful. Like, like all the things that I love, if I remove the nostalgic, sorry, I just spat in your face. If I remove the nostalgic veil, it's questionable. We went through this, but why I brought it up, we went through this with Transformers and we're like, we still love this movie. It's got its points, <laughs> but oh my God, what a flaming pile of turd. <laughs> you know? I remember when yeah. we did that. Now, this I never encountered before today. And I just, oh, it's bad. They, they watch okay. the ship sail away. Oh boy, you have fun, corpse. <laughs> I'm glad we could connect like this. It's like, oh, no, no, it's all right. The, the value like... of the entire Oregon coast is peacefully setting sail. Someone grab a fucking kayak. I know. <laughs> I mean, where's, don't we have a Coast Guard? Go get that loot. The internal we logic kind of, of this guard. movie is awful. And it's, it's, I, I hate implausible things. I did as a <laughs> child too. Like, uh, I admire the, uh, the inventor kid, uh, Data. Data. Yeah. However, his inventions are shit. The, he's the a fucking, kid. He is a kid. Yeah. But the mouth that grips a nail that holds him over the punji steak pit. Come uh, on. Yeah, yeah. Give him a grappling hook. That was, that was an intentionally cute thing. I, Fucking hate, but they reuse things. that exact like thing a little bit later on. Yeah, with Joey, know? with Joey pants and Joey pants, Joey pants. 
to I just his don't dick. care. I just, I just <laughs> don't care. This man watched the DVD commentary. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, he was he was here in town a few years ago for Rose City Comic Con, oh. and he had a big panel in the big room, and and he said he made comment that a lot of people have problems pronouncing his last name, so everybody just calls him Joey Pants. <laughs> so, no, it was is. Blech. The whole time after seeing the Matrix, I'm like, oh, so you come in, you turn into Cypher. You're that pissed off because you didn't get the gold. Okay, so let's go through the actors. <laughs> I know. Because, I don't know. I'm sure we got <laughs> some know. notes on some of yeah. these people. Well, we have Sean Austin, who played Aston. Mikey. Aston. Who has always apparently looked like Sean Austin. Yep. Aston. I mean, that that kid is Sean Austin. Yes. The, the, the face has not changed. Like but not like no, he, he, Aston. He but changed in, in Stranger Aston. Things. What? I mean, he's he's... His face, he's changed, doesn't... No, he looks the same. He looks the same. He just same. looks older and bigger. Yeah. But... yeah. <laughs> okay. That's got his that face. face. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Every uh, time I see him in something, I just almost want to see him pull out an inhaler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, so uh, I have to throw this out there because my husband watched this with me a little bit today. He's a respiratory therapist. And every time <laughs> Mikey pulled out the inhaler, he's like, he's using it wrong. <laughs> he's he using was, it wrong. It was like primatine mist. It didn't even look like an inhaler. Even even if it's supposed to be an inhaler, yeah. there's supposed to apparently be a gap, uh, a stopper in between your mouth and oh, the yeah. inhaler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, every yeah. time he's just like, uh, he, he's using it wrong. And I'm like, get over it. It's the 80s. I over was it. an asthmatic kid. I had an inhaler my whole life. And it's odd. I never even noticed that. The one that always triggered me was, that's not a fucking inhaler. That's primatine. You don't use that if you actually have asthma. What's primatine? It's just some over-the-counter inhaler that doesn't do shit. Mm-hmm. If this kid had asthma, oh, then he throws it away. It's like, a, I'm like, it's no, like, it's you don't like do that. You don't like just a, no. cure your asthma. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's okay. I mean, his parents are now rolling in money, so he can just throw away his valuable <laughs> medical supplies. <laughs> I hated everybody. I hated the whole damn thing. I hated, I hated the mom. I hated the maid oh for not slapping down that kid who was trying to torment her. I hated the kid for tormenting the maid. I hated Sloth, who could easily break his chains at any time, just sitting there and taking it. I hated everyone in this movie. This I you love... sound like me with Valerian. <laughs> you know, say, but did yeah, you really? You hate... liked Valerian. Did what one did I hate? His mom, Sloth's mom. I don't remember. There was one that I was Probably just like, yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, hate really? this movie. Yeah. I loved her. Maybe no, Night she Breeze. was awful. I, and that's why yeah, I love her. Night <laughs> that is why I love Wait, her. Wait, what? What? Mom. Sloth's mom. Oh, and yeah. Ramsey? Yes. Yeah, throw mama from the train. She I was phoning oh it in this movie. Yeah. Oh, oh. She, she was. Yeah. But I still love her. Yeah. Best and miss in, her. in throw mama from the train. Yeah. Owen! Yeah. yeah, I never saw that either. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. Then we have Josh Brolin playing Brand. Oh, wait. What do we Young think, what do we, Josh what do we think about Mikey? What's his oh, line? Okay, we did this with It. They're kids. So yeah, their, their alignment is, is kid. kid. Okay, all right, all right. The only one who I might have an alignment of the kids, I think, would be... Josh, Josh Brolin, because he's he's sixteen. Yeah, which one's mouth? Mouth is Corey Feldman. That one was an ass. <laughs> yes. I, I think that one has an alignment because that kid has evil in him. He, well, well he's, it's also he's Corey a, Feldman, and he aged pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. he was the bard yeah. of the group. No, he was always trying no, to he tell was a story. Rogue. No, right. I don't. No, I don't. I don't think he'd be the rogue of the group. Well, okay, depends on what I can see him as a bard, about. but he's evil aligned. <laughs> yes, very he, much. He so. just took pleasure in torturing people around him. So we have Josh Brolin as no, Brand. He's so young in this. But he's uh, aged well, though. He, he really has. Oh, yeah, he has. Okay. Mm. <laughs> we we found Nathaniel's sweet spot for this one. He, he's, on, he, <laughs> he, he's, he's a fine-looking old man. Mm-hmm. I, I wish I could be that attractive at his age. How old is he? I mean, I'm directly across from you. I wish you could be that attractive <laughs> at his age, too. Thanks, he was born idea. in 1968. Yeah. Since he's the adult, uh, uh, quotes, adult of the group, uh, what would his alignment be, do you think? Teenager. I'm going to... But he, chaotic good. Okay. I would put him at chaotic Because he went after yeah. the kids. He went after his brother. Okay. Yeah, he still beats the crap out of him. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Chaotic good. He seemed to value... Well, I don't know. He was all about doing what he was told. Well, not only that, but I mean, he stole yeah. that bicycle right from under that little girl. That's and so that, that, was was awesome. that was great. <laughs> he didn't. That was something even as a kid. I said, what, like, why didn't you just air up your tires again? Oh, that was Kea Hui Kwan's niece. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I just watched the special. Okay. By the way, Dusty, mm-hmm. if you haven't watched the DVD commentary, mm-hmm. it's a whole separate side thing mm-hmm. with, but it's a full panel 
of all of the actors in the like 2001. Yeah. Talking about the movie while they're watching it and it keep cutting back and forth is funny. Yeah, Corey Feldman tried to like completely steal the spotlight on that whole thing. No, he did a good he did a good he did an okay job. They all did a good. I think but uh it was really good. Okay. It was hilarious. But to bring it back, I don't think now that I think about it, he may not necessarily be good. I mean, you don't mug a little girl and be good. Like if you were a paladin in the old school paladin, you would lose your powers for that shit. (laughs) You're also a teenager. You make some bad decisions here and there. I think for the most part he was good. Okay. It's a neighbor's bike. He'd probably bring it back if he could. Yeah, yeah if it wasn't. Well, I, think it, I, think, yeah, I think it got left down in the ravine yeah. that he yeah. launched off of. Oh, so are any of you cyclists? No. For like no. No. All right. But but I know that de-airing a tire like that is not that's not how you do it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, oh, also you that it? you don't take <laughs> yeah. the cap off well, and it just immediately loses uh, first air. First off, yeah. as a kid, all of those kids had bikes, which mm-hmm. means all of those mm-hmm. kids knew the basics of how bikes work. They mm-hmm. might not have known how to repair bikes how to work on bikes, but they, I guarantee you, each and every one of those kids knew how to pump a bike tire. Oh, yeah. Yep. And they knew how bikes worked in general. They knew the mm-hmm. general operational principles. None of, no one in that entire group would have made a comment about damaging a bike. All he does is pop the cap off and they're like, oh, no, he worked all summer to get those <laughs> 357 tires. lawns. Wait, or what are you like talking that? about? It's just the fucking tire. Yeah. All you got to do is, there's not a lot of money. there's not a lot of money in Astoria. It's, it's not like he slashed the tires and said, "Oh, they're they're damaged. Yeah. They're screwed now. Good luck." They literally just took the cap off. Yeah, which didn't which isn't going to do anything. You have to the yeah. little the little. T- Are you inside. saying there's a glaring logical flare in this movie? <laughs> no, I say this movie is a masterpiece and stands on its. I'm saying that own Steven Spielberg merits. doesn't actually understand how bike work bikes work. <laughs> For one, I don't think he's ever ridden a bike. First off, he clearly thinks that you can let the air out just by popping the cap, but he also thinks they can fly. I don't know how he would come up with that. He is the producer, actually. So he would, yeah, that that's his call. Yeah. And then we have Jeff Cohen, who played Chunk, one of my favorite characters. Oh, I meant kid. Oh, of course. Yeah, Yeah, we're now back to uh, with a trait of sniveling (laughs) and ice cream sniffing. Yeah, fucking the truffle shuffle. He's a lawyer now. Mm -hmm. And like doesn't want anything to do with any of these people anymore, pretty much. I can't imagine why. Oh, was he? Yeah. Yeah. I remember reading something like he just does one of the most talkative ones on the stories, too. All right. That's cool. He was a good looking dude, too. Yeah. Yeah. He lost a lot of weight. Yeah. He's like, I think he's an entertainment lawyer, isn't he? Something Mm -hmm. like that. Oh, okay. I just know he's a lawyer. Yep. Okay. All right. And then we have uh, Corey Feldman, who played Mouth. I love Corey Feldman. I just evil. Long, evil kid, I yeah. Evil. The evil bard. Yeah, I, I can go for I that. still can't give him an alignment yet. I would say chaotic neutral, maybe. Evil? Eh, he doesn't kill anyone. That's yeah. Yeah. He'll grow into know. it. He'll grow into it. He's yeah. taking baby steps with yeah. it, you know, so he's on the path. I would say chaotic neutral. Uh, and then we have Carrie Green, who played the love interest to Brand, who was Andy, the redhead. So... She's kind of boring. Yeah, that yeah, was she's, she's that was PC. girl type one. Yeah. I mean, that was awful. That was just bad. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Laura? Never date a girl eh. that can't punch a guy in the face. She elbowed him in the face. No, she well, she said she did. Yeah, yeah. she was boring. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't don't really care. have a comment on her. Yeah, she she also was in. Uh, she did a lot of movie, a couple of movies there along this vein. Like she was in Lucas with um. Oh, what was his name? I think the, the other Corey Haim. Yeah. Um. And uh, a couple other movies are the same. It was basically just the same character. She just she was in Lady Hawk. Was she? was she? Yep. Um, Who? I don't know, but they just mentioned it on the DVD yesterday oh. or this morning, last night when I watched it. Okay. She just said that. Oh, we did Lady Hawk. In fact, I think they all went to the opening of Lady Hawk. I was there at that. Yeah. Huh. I don't hmm. know who she was in it though. Lady Hawk's classic. Yeah. Stands up. That's what I was watching while y'all were watching the fucking Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Lady Hawk the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have one of my favorite actresses in the movie, Martha Plimpton, who yes! plays Steph. She was my second Hollywood crush. Who was your first? Jennifer Connelly. Labyrinth. Oh, oh. Duh. Mm. <laughs> That's right. We talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Martha Plimpton played the the uh, standoffish I have questionable feelings towards mouth but don't want to admit it to anyone let alone mouth until the very end she'll get in trouble at school oh yeah because she's yeah yeah because she's a high school student he's Mm -hmm. middle school i think there's laws about that three years Mm -hmm. in oregon (laughs) how much is it in astoria (laughs) (laughs) i don't want to go there (laughs) you're gonna lose our historian demographic oh no (laughs) all one of you 
And then Jonathan K. Kwan as Data. I swear to God, I've seen this kid in other things. Uh, yeah, he's in Indiana Jones. Yeah, he played short round. But, but yeah. something else, something else is an adult. Okay, let's let's like let's, he has he has very recognizable Jones cheek. short rounds revenge. No, uh, he, he has. See. It's I think I've I've seen him somewhere recently. Uh, he was in an X Men movie. There it is. Uh, I think. Yeah, X. No, he was miscellaneous crew in X Men. Oh, Jet Li's the one. Um, that might be it. I love that movie. Red Pirate, Encino Man with... Um, also love that movie. Brendan. Come at me, bro. <laughs> I actually kind of like Encino Man. I uh, played uh, an episode of uh, Tales from the Crypt. Okay. Then, no. Yeah. Okay. Next. Next. All right. Next. Then we have uh, John Matuzak, uh, who played Sloth, who was a football player for the... I think it was either... I think it was the Raiders? Yeah. I do did, I did like him. He yelled well. Oh like yeah, th- there were some good heart wrenching yeah. yells that came out of him. He yeah, was he, was, he was basically chewing the scenery with his five he, words of dialogue. He was, <laughs> he was, he was, uh, he was really good in this. I, I will say that I, I like that performance. Well, he was also he was he's been in a few other movies. He was in North Dallas Forty. He was also in the Ice Pirates from nineteen eighty four. One Crazy Summer. That was um, a good movie too. Yeah, Ice Pirates. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love that movie. Um, the conveyor belt with the dick chopping. <laughs> Good he stuff. was fun. Sloth was fun. And mm-hmm. he, he, to me, was like one of the most quotable characters. Like, yeah. hey, you go. Yeah. Baby. Baby. Ruth. I, 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 we still always use, hey, you guys. Yeah. Which is the thing. Like, hey, you guys. I wonder how much of that is a Pacific Northwest slash Oregon thing. Like, if I'm you go to Alabama. Okay. Were you Alabama at this time? Alabama, I was, Alabama I was an Alabama standing in until I was in my nineteen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I guess it does translate. I just I I kids, c- coming at it now. I don't understand why this movie is so loved. It's kids <laughs> from the hood mm-hmm. in the eighties on bikes on an adventure, and I like, think it's like one of the reasons why uh, a lot of people like. I don't know. I think you like Stranger Things. Right? Stranger Things. Yeah, I'd love I mean, to see them like, dumped into that. Yeah, because <laughs> Stranger Things basically took everything from the Goonies, ET. I mean, if you look at Barb from Stranger Things, it's Steph from it's Steph. It's Absolutely. Steph from the Goonies. We were watching it last night. We couldn't remember her name. We just kept calling her Barb. <laughs> <laughs> so a buddy of mine does these games online. Um, I've mentioned this guy before. He does. I mentioned him in the Big Trouble in Little China episode. Mm-hmm. He does these Savage Worlds themes games, and one of the ones that he did was Goonies versus Aliens. Oh wow! Oh, All wow. the kids my money's the Goonies. on this, My money's on the Xenomorph <laughs> <laughs> trying to solve a mystery with the aliens. Oh my god! I want to play it so badly. <laughs> then we go into Robert Davi, who played Jake. One of the Fratellis, the the uh, the one that was singing the Italian songs. He is a trained operatic singer. Yeah, yeah, he's a yeah, good voice. Yeah, well, one of my uh, one of my best friends, his mom, uh, is from Italy and like knows him personally. So <laughs> I, I kept expecting this Clockwork Orange thing to happen, where he's like, "I'm sick, kick, kick <laughs> in the rain." There's that this line great. in the commentary where they're going through that scene where they first meet the Fratellis in the house. Mm-hmm. And Davi comes out and he's all serious and he's talking to him like everything's going on. And then Martha Plumpton's like, Davi just believes all of this is real. <laughs> so we were dying because I can totally see it. He's that kind of guy. Yeah, he played a yeah. villain in one of the Bond movies. In one of the, uh, I think um, he was the villain in License to Kill with Timothy Dalton. I think he was the bad guy. So he was in a movie called The Sorcerer's Apprentice, where he played a wizard and some kid moved in next door to him and learned magic from him. Was that him. the Nick Cage one that came no. out a few years ago? No. Oh, okay. And it was really bad. It was just a kid learns magic kind of movie. Okay. The only I reason I ever, of cards. The only reason I know this movie is because it was on a double DVD set with a movie that I had never seen until a couple years ago. And that movie was called... Beastmaster. Oh, Beastmaster is great. Beastmaster was the worst fucking movie I think I'd ever <laughs> seen. I didn't grow up with it. The whole time I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh yeah, that's a, that's when you have to grow you up. Have, we went on yeah. we went on them. We went on vacation. On here, don't no, you? I have Deathstalker. <laughs> oh, excuse me. You're right. There. Okay, but sorry, they're interchangeable after a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went on this vacation to the coast, and the hotel that we stay at every year has a selection of DVD rentals that you can rent. Mm-hmm. So, and we had brought this, and we watched it, and we're like, these are both awful movies. So we snuck downstairs and put the DVD set into the rack of rental movies, hoping that nobody would ever find it. 
apparently somebody found it because it's gone the next time we went, but uh, or they just threw it out. Or <laughs> they just threw it out because they're terrible movies. Or someone was watching it at that exact moment. <gasps> you made someone's vacation. They That's went, true. Oh my oh. god, it's Beastmaster. Oh. It's Beastmaster. Oh, oh. with Kodo and Poto, the ferrets. <laughs> Those were the only redeeming qualities of that movie for the ferrets. I, I liked the 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 vampire esque monsters that they opened up their arms and they had like the wings and they wrapped the their prey around it and they they like ate you know them. they were cool but it was so like okay i would have and rip torn rip torn as a bad guy come on yeah. with like a fang dangling from his earring yeah it was bad it was terrible it was great come on it was a cheap goonies is better bargain store oh conan my God, the barbarian <laughs> bargain store bar- conan the barbarian oh. <laughs> No, this movie was trash. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's 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 just, it's it's trash. It's awful. None of you you can kids are smarter oh, than, yeah, they are. than than you jokingly make them. Kids I, are actually yeah, I know fairly they are. intelligent little sponges. Sometimes. And well, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> but I mean, th- this level of idiocy would have just gotten these kids killed in like the first 20 minutes. And I don't mm, I, yeah. I I would rather see them overcoming the same obstacles, but like are you familiar? actually doing it? Are you familiar Not, with the, the hallucination grease theory? No. So the, the, the theory that the movie Grease oh, I know this is one. a hallucination that starts at the very beginning of the movie where he rescues her from the water. Mm-hmm. Well, the theory mm-hmm. is that she actually dies and the entire rest of the movie is a hallucination that ends with a flying car, which is going, her into, heaven. going into heaven. I think people need to get outside more. I think <laughs> perhaps Goonies is a hallucination. Because what happens is the kids all get on those bikes and then they all go down the hill and then they all actually accidentally ride off the hill. Or a semi so comes. all mm-hmm. dying. Or a I semi the, comes and runs over. I wish over the semi came. And they're hallucinating all of this. Yeah, Bran, Bran dies when he goes launching off of the yep. he goes launching the right off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can see and that. It would have made a better story. comes up out of one of those coastal <laughs> storm drains and it's like, welcome to my domain, kids. Storm drains. That's cute that they would have those down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I went have to you actually been to Astoria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I uh, went to Waldport, and once I was stuck in Waldport because the fire department had both ends of 101 blocked off. Nobody could enter or leave because the storm drains were on fire. <laughs> yep. <I> remember? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was like, all right. Well, I'm going to go to the one bar in this town <laughs> and then i'm going to go across the street to the one chinese food place and that's how i spent my day in waldport how was the one chinese place it was delicious oh okay wow yeah. mm. it was actually quite amazing all right who else do we have and then we have joey pants who played francis eh. what was a francis that was the one with the toupee that was always getting beat up by oh, the- his right. whole joke was yeah. toupee yeah, yeah. i i it yeah. was it was sad adult number two. I don't care. Okay. And then we have Anne Ramsey, who played Mama. Okay. Yeah. I love her. I, I do, too. And she was... Yeah. 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 No, That's I all did. she did in this whole movie. Yeah. 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 She was walking And then slapping her and son slapping. around. Yeah. 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 She was straight up physical comedy in this movie. I, I wonder, because I think she, she passed away of, with, of throat cancer. And I wonder if she had been diagnosed at this point, because I think it was like 88 or 89 when she died. I think. Oh, absolutely. So, it was throat cancer that made, that gave shifts. She yeah. had throat cancer before this, and oh, then she okay. had surgery. She had lost a part of her jaw and her tongue. Oh, wow. All of that contributed to the character that she portrayed in her movies. That sword speech, that mm. weird way that she talked, that was because she had had cancer. Oh. Then it came back in like 88, I think. And then she died within the year. 88 or 86. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Oh. And then we have uh, one of, apparently this is part of the table's favorite, uh, Rosalita Lupe on- Ontiveros. She, to me, was the star of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she found, certainly saved the day. <laughs> yeah. She found the, the gems at the end and and apparently uh because she the, wanted to get paid i totally wouldn't have given those gems away too oh no oh yeah fuck you and your little shit kid these <laughs> yeah. are They're, staying with me yes yeah. you know? <laughs> the way that that kid treated her i was thinking the same thing yeah even as a kid i was like why did she do that and you know you know that he didn't treat her any better after that because he's a little shit kid mm-hmm. he's not a nice kid so what were what were some of your favorite scenes of the movie credits 
Hey, you guys. So, so Sloth was Pretty one of your much favorites. anything to do with Sloth, I loved. I think he owned every scene that he was in. I, like, I agree with that. With that, that makeup, the the mechanical thing that they did where they timed his ear, blinks yeah. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And apparently, it took hours and hours of time to put that makeup on. But but I I loved that character. I loved Sloth. Like even as a kid, Sloth was like, I want a big brother. That is, I want Sloth as my big brother. I just remember like he was he was my hero. It was really strange. My as a kid that my hero was the weird mutant. Hmm. Yeah. What about you, Laura? I actually really enjoyed the music. Okay. Yeah, I know you're a big soundtrack fan. Yeah. So the music helped made the movie better because it was really kind of epic and just fun. I actually that was theme rewatching was burned in my brain. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 Both dun. of it, especially when they're uh stabbing the sail and going down. It's just ah, it was awesome. Lighting was actually really, really good. I actually appreciated some of the uh, tricks and angles they were aiming for. In the beginning, yeah, I agree. But it, they didn't hold with it once they got underground. What? No, they They, did. they stopped they doing did. like the really interesting hard to pull angles. They still did some shadowing, mm. which was not horrible. I was expecting more like high low stuff. And Oh, they're in a tunnel. There's They can't get that camera up high. Yeah. They, they did some really interesting work at the beginning of it where I was going, hey, that's a good shot, especially for 85. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, the plane. They're in a helicopter yeah. shooting down at the kids while they're talking. Or like when they're, and they're when they're showing car. them on the road, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, bicycling away and, you know, you keep losing them in the trees. I actually I, thought that was a really, really nice shot. So there's something just, you do like about the movie. Oh, yeah. In okay. almost any movie. <laughs> they're, they're, I'll find something that's, you know, agreeable. Mm-hmm. It certainly wasn't well, the script. <laughs> what was your agreeable thing in Valerian? Oh, the, the backgrounds, the world building. Okay, Fantastic. Cool. All right. Yeah. We can um, just stop there. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of it was also a steaming pile of shit. I love pirates. And for me, this was my first pirate movie. So this is one of my favorites. Did you know that the ship was entirely real? They had made the entire ship for this movie. And they said um, after the film, it was offered to anyone who could take it. And no one wanted it. So it was completely scrapped. That's a shame. Yeah. Today, See, that would not happen. This this ship yeah. need, This ship movie needed magic in it somewhere. And then a lot of my complaints would have gone away. Well, if, there's this if, video if, game called Goonies 2 mm-hmm. on the NES that has magic and mermaids and shit in it. Well, that, that might help. But I mean, you can't this take a 200-year-old really frigate like and just it. sail it yeah. out. Yeah. 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 That was, it, 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 funny interesting game. enough, that yeah. was actually... Um, right, for the music, you had a little 8-bit. Exactly. It was yeah. modeled after Errol Flynn's ship uh, from the Seahawk from 1940, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of cool. Um and apparently the cast was not allowed to see the pirate ship before the scene was shot. So that like expression of surprise is real. So they hadn't seen it yet. Corey and Sean claim that they saw it, but oh, yeah. I don't know if I believe it. I yeah. sometimes don't listen to commentaries. Like it has yeah. to be a movie like John Wick. Like I love the commentary for John Wick. Yeah. And like this I just haven't had the interest I in normally doing don't that. either. And then Sam last night was like, Have you watched the commentary? You should watch the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it. It was one of the best things ever. It really oh, was. Check it Richard out, Donner was a hilarious guy. That was, I'm sorry, you said it at the beginning. That was the director? The director. Yeah. 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 Uh, Richard Donner has also some of the movies that he has directed. Superman. Superman Lady Hawk, Lethal Weapon, Timeline, which is a shit of a movie. If you Which read, read Lethal the Weapon? Uh, the first one. Oh. Uh, 16 Blocks, uh, Lethal Weapon 4, Conspiracy Theory. Oh. Uh, Maverick, Lethal, Lethal Weapon 3, Lethal Weapon 2. There we go. Scrooged. <laughs> Um, yeah, I loved that movie. Superman uh, 2, but is uncredited. The Omen. Yeah, he's got some heavy movies okay, under him. Yeah, that's all good. Almost yeah. all good. Yeah. yeah. Go, Richard. Mm-hmm. Haven't let me down yet. Wait, wait. He did super. He did the yeah. one. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, he did the one with Richard Pryor, didn't he? Yeah, that's number three. Uh, which which uh, Office Space stole the idea from on that one. About the taking a half that half penny off of the top in the computer system. Yeah, no ideas are original Whoa. anymore. Sorry, <laughs> so much anger. So, uh, uh, so the camera shows. So, so, some of the more technical stuff was more of your favorite than the script. Yeah, aspect. yeah. I thought, I thought whoever did the set design mm-hmm. was inspired. It was really very nice. Good. What about the makeup, sloth? Sloth at his time, especially with that ear and matching the eyes, yeah. that was that was impressive. Mm-hmm. Some of the CG was but, horrible, but it was just a product of that time. Yeah, yeah. you can't help that. Yeah. It's it was all right. Uh, they didn't actually sail the boat out. I could see it. Um, That's just shitty CG. Yeah. 
that was matting. that CG oh. or was that was that blue screen at the time? Oh, that was blue screen. Yeah, it was yeah. blue screen. Yeah, green screen. Yeah. But also, to the Oregon coast, they aren't putting a boat out there. They'll never get it back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. And 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 haystack Especially rock, right which is nowhere not near Astoria. No, uh, yeah. there's, there's m- multiple haystacks. That's the problem. Well, that one was filmed at Cannon Beach, though. Yeah. Okay. Ecola yeah. State Park. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing anywhere near there for a ship that size to come out of. No. <laughs> there's nothing near Astoria either. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and it would have been impaled on the rocks well before it got out to the yeah. point of where it was. Yeah. But but it was interesting. I mean, this movie was, for me, I mean, I liked, there were a lot of books in grade school that were like, you know, uh, Treasure in the Cave. Those like almost like Hardy Boy esque books. That's what it was. It was Hardy Boy. Yeah, it was like a Hardy yeah. Boy or just like mystery. Like you know, someone stumbles into a cave and they find the traps and they find the this. I had a I had a huge thing for those types of books. Did you yeah. ever read a series of books called The Three Investigators? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember the one, Jupiter. Something, I, have, something. I don't remember. I was, just the title sounds really yeah. familiar. I was reading Heinlein and the Stainless Steel Rat at seven. Cool. I mean, I just, I think I skipped over this I'm part sorry. of my childhood. <laughs> I, mean, I think you did. It seems and like, it, yeah. Because I didn't really you skipped come over I, fun. I didn't come to Heinlein until I like I was know that I 13 or 14. <laughs> 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 no, he has a whole series of juvenile books like Have Spaceship Will Travel and that, that are Potty actually Cane of Mars. Yeah. Okay. I read I read that one. I think I was like, Do you say Potty Cane? Yeah, that's how I remember pronouncing it as a kid. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> that's not how you say it, but <laughs> how do you say it then? Pod Cane. Pod Cane. Yeah, I was always Potty, Potty Cane. cane. <laughs> P-O-D-E-K-A-N-E, I think, right? Potty Tell cane. Elon, the first poop on Mars. This shit's gotta happen. <laughs> Anyway, no, I mean, uh, just the, the slip and slide part was cool for me. The the water slide where they got. Yeah, to the I ship. hope those all those barbs were made of foam. Oh, <laughs> I know that, that, that one actor sits up and man, are you getting an insurance claim? According to the director, after the actors went home, they would turn the slides on and go down it themselves. Hmm. They should. Yeah, they yeah better I too. <laughs> like Kevin Spielberg and all of them would just. Go for slide rides. One of the one of the traps that I I never really liked, even as a kid, sitting there in the theater and watching it, was the uh, the the piano, the organ trap. Where you had yeah, how does how is the air compressed? I don't. I didn't care. But I didn't have any thought about that. No, my my problem with it was when the 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 block wall started coming down when they got the organ right. Why didn't Brand just like jump onto it and have use his body weight to pull the rest of the way down? He would have fallen and died. That's why. Why were they afraid of the falling rocks formerly when the Fratellis just walked around them? These are questions that are best not answered. And, and looking at that, looking at that piano area, apparently that that chasm was hundreds of feet deep, which was interesting to see. Yeah, how? Like right next to the ocean? How, how does that work? Because you yeah. know, groundwater. It just it made no <laughs> sense. There, the whole there movie made no, no sense. No, I, I I admit going back and rewatching even, even as an adult multiple times. Rope there doesn't are, last two hundred years. There are some things. It's like okay, but. I enjoy the movie. But it's booby traps. Yeah. Booty traps. That's what I said. Booty traps. You never had a love for booby traps? Yeah. Booby like traps like actual thing. working ones. Yeah. Yeah, but pirate booby traps. Also, never, they didn't kill shit. I don't I I also didn't understand the 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 boulder that killed Chester Cop, Copperpot. Where yeah. okay. did it go? Yeah. Huh? Where did it go? No, no. Why was that the only one that, that dropped Cause, when because he hit that one that Yeah, but yeah. Sean Austin's Mikey pulled up the the cord and all of them then dropped because so he there tripped were two. all of it there's a magical resetting mechanism unless the stone detects that there's a body under it in which case it lasts forever <laughs> i mean just <laughs> this fucking movie man <laughs> like the continuity the guy who was thinking out the continuity just packed up and went home in disgust <laughs> he just he, i want no part of this i'm an artist i'm gone <laughs> fuck you <laughs> No, tell us how you really feel. I feel really like feel. You're fuck back. you. <laughs> <laughs> so you fail that Spiel, You feel that Spielberg and Donner failed you on yeah. this movie. No, it's not like they owe me anything. I just think that even good people put out garbage sometimes. I honestly knew this would happen. Like I just yeah. When you said well, that you you've you've, you've, you've sat through a couple of these with me, and you know yeah. I like fucking. I I like overcoming logic. You know the things have to have an internal consistency. And this is just, and then we'll do this. Why? Because it's cool, but it wouldn't work. Who cares? Yeah. You know? No, I still I, love I, this movie. Now, if if, if yeah. you add, if it becomes a magical universe or a supernatural universe, mm-hmm. that's fine because poof, magic made it happen. But this isn't magic. This is supposed to be like these kids in reality, our reality, find this thing. Mm-hmm. And it, it just, it doesn't work. It's stupid. It's dumb. 
I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> what about the Indiana Jones movies? Do you like those? Because they're ridiculously unrealistic. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but there's mysticism in there. There's there is. magic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've got the arc. You've got there's not, just a little no, at the no. end of each episode. No. A little but at the end of each It's movie. a magical universe. It's different. You've got the Ark of the Covenant. You've well, got well, the, the Sankara the, the magic Stones. of the Ark only happens at the a end. Holy Grail. And aliens. At the end. What? And aliens. Okay, that I don't move, know what I you're talking about. That. I haven't I'm only true. talking about the true. three Indiana I, it, Jones it was a fan, movies it was a fan, that it, exist. It was, it was a kind of sort of good <laughs> fan <laughs> film. It was a kind of sort of good fan film. But, that but, was horribly yeah. shot. They yeah. always close out with a little tinge of mysticism, but everything else is like heroics. I don't yeah. really think I'm Indiana okay with like it because Stark is it does show it. It, just, it happens for like a minute at the end of the movie, and that's How do you it. I figure it's a minute. I mean, the whole movie is based on the Ark of the Covenant. That's... The whole movie is humans doing human things. And yeah, and then a supernatural, supernatural things happens at the end is Always. what he's saying. Yeah, that's how the movies are. There's a supernatural I thing can that go with that. Yeah. It's yeah. roundabout statement. But yeah, it's a magic universe. Because it belongs in a museum. Damn it. <laughs> Try to sneak that in there. And that's why it's magical. Because museums are magical places where everything is I on just, of our history. I, 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 this, I don't know why it failed to grab me. It just turned me off from start to finish. I mean, the Goonies are basically just future Indiana Joneses. No, they're not. <laughs> why not? Because they're, they're, they're awful. They're awful squabbling little children who fell their way through this. Sean Astin. Cor- what's that? Corey Feldman. Sean Astin. Yeah, Sean uh, Astin. Mikey. Mm-hmm. Future Indiana Jones. No. I think he, could he do doesn't it. have a long enough face. He's no, I, I would think Brand would go on to be Future Indiana Which one Jones. Was he? He, was, he was the older brother. <laughs> yeah. He could be if he'd give a shit. He did. There were moments of like touching, like uh, not touching. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'll say uh, saccharine. There was some touching in there. <laughs> no, there were some moments of... of yeah, when mm-hmm. fucking... F- what's a sloth kiss the kid? <laughs> the candy bar is... Like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Get the fuck off me, mutants! <laughs> or or, or when, when Bran's girlfriend kisses Mikey. There's there's that whole bit. Yeah, I can't miss the pedophilias. <laughs> For God's sakes. <laughs> fuck this movie. <laughs> From what I understand, he was 14 and she was 16. Three years. It's legal. The actors. Yeah. Three years. Although yeah. I don't know what the rule was back in the day. Well, it's legal in Oregon, <laughs> goddamn. <it. laughs> yeah, she was only like eight inches taller. Than <laughs> and how do you not know the guy that you've kissed before suddenly does or does not have braces? Because she's like, did, did he get braces? Movie logic, dude. Movie logic. Spielberg yeah. magic. <laughs> Fucking hell. I don't get me wrong. I mean, there, there, were, there were moments of connection where, like, the cinematography I thought was good. Mm-hmm. I like sloth. I just didn't like anything else. I like how they're they're screaming one minute, and then the floorboards immediately above them they notice a, a shriek, but they don't know they're down there. I mean, they're literally screaming at each other. You be quiet. You be quiet. And then they hear a creak where right above them dust falls down, and it's the people entering who magically did not hear them. I mean, it's it's like in a sitcom where like this is how he it is, was, and it was filmed beautifully too, by the way. Yeah, with the dust. Yeah, yeah. it was well lit. But that does that, that it, it was it was logo. sitcom where you mm-hmm. you take two steps yeah. and you turn to the person next to you talk in a normal speaking voice and the people on the couch can't hear you. I love that opening logo. Just <laughs> the skull, and the zoom. Apparently, one eyed Willie's skull was actually made from real bone, it, and it's apparently in Richard Donner's mm-hmm. uh, office. Yeah, yeah, he still has it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well. <laughs> I oh, thought Matthew. the gold looked nice. So no, turning it around cool. to you, Dusty, what was your favorite scene? I think my favorite scene was was Sean Astin in in uh, the room with One Eyed Willie, the, given the 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 Goonie speech and having his emotional gold. moment. Yeah, where I think did that so. connection come from, though? I mean, he had sort of was okay. it through the traps because Sean Astin had this like really <laughs> convoluted way of opening the front door. <laughs> like, is that where he where he felt this connection to him? Throughout the commentary, know. all of the cast are talking about Sean like he's a murderous little child, <laughs> leading them all into his <laughs> network of traps. They're like, wow, we're being led by this psychotic child. <laughs> What's <laughs> happening here? I see that. No, yeah. I, I, I think that tie and then the scene tied with uh, would be tied with that would be where the is as, as much as technically it's not going to happen. But I, the, I like the scene where the ship is floating out to sea. I just think it looks nice. Although it wouldn't, cool. although a ship that old, the wood would not have lasted. Oh, not only that, that there's no one at the fucking helm. Yeah. <laughs> it hits the first roller, it turns sideways, and oh, hey, look, the gold's in about three feet of water. <laughs> Let's go get it. <laughs> this is true. Mm-hmm. I also did like uh, 
all the skeletons that were stabbed and like like the one guy at the at the helm with his with the daggers in his eyes. Yeah, the yeah. set design was fantastic. Oh yeah, the set design was beautiful. Did you see that wonderful octopus? Yes, Matthew. Yeah, I'm glad you missed that one. Yeah, the original terrible. cut is there's an octopus <laughs> that that plays with a, attacks the kids. Like I've never seen tentacle that one. porn kind of way. No, what's not, going on here? Not there's an octopus in yeah. the water, mm-hmm. and it's because apparently awful. 16. <laughs> Yeah. Which explains why Data actually said, and then there was an octopus. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering about that. I was like, <laughs> so you just yeah, making shit up? Huge, there's yeah. a, there's a, there was a big scene with an octopus and the, I think attacking the, the girls and going after and trying to keep so them So it was her. tentacle. Apparently, yes. <laughs> what are you shaking your head at? Don't judge me. <laughs> oh, why? I don't know. I mean, you can like whatever you boy, like. Boy, boy, I mean, boy, boy. when when you... it's. It's just like religion. If you get indoctrinated into it young <laughs> enough, you'll like anything. It's 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 like Star Wars, yeah. What did you just say? <laughs> 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 so yeah, well, that's the Goonies. I don't really know if we're gonna have any more than than Matthew's negativity here. <laughs> what, Laura? Laura? I actually have a story. Um, oh, please, please. Yes. So I actually worked with one of the actors from the Goonies. Oh, two thousand three. Which one? I actually looked up his name because I don't remember. I just remember him dying on set every night. Kurt Hansen. He was the dad who was like, oh, sign the papers, sign the papers. I worked with him. He worked on Fahrenheit 451 Oh yeah, at Mount Hood Community College a long time ago. A um, good story, incidentally. Yeah, Ray Bradbury actually like gave Tobias Anderson blessings to do the show. And then Multnomah Library did a huge thing with it. And it, it just was a huge show. And he was one of the actors I actually got to help and work with a little bit, which was really nifty. Cool. He was, yeah, he was the guy that was like, that wanted to, to hand the papers off then, right? Mm-hmm. That guy, yeah. Yeah. Is your dad home? No. Is your mommy home? Yeah. That one. Yeah, that was him. Okay. Oh, to get us all diapers or something like that. Yep. That's my tiny microscopic story. Nice. I got to actually work with him. And yeah, he died on set every night and then he dragged himself off set, dust himself <laughs> off. And I'm like, Nice job. Good job. Yeah. I got nothing else. I, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't like, like it. Movie. There's I, nothing but hate. Yeah. I don't normally come like I was, I was prepared with Valerian. I was, I was surprised mm-hmm. by how much I didn't like this Basan movie that mm-hmm. I, I really should have liked. It's sci-fi. Mm-hmm. It's, it has an interesting premise on paper. I should have liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, this has pirates. Mm-hmm. It has hunting on paper. I should have liked this, but I have not experienced this level of bleh, in a very long time, <laughs> I, I, I yeah, I, I think I, you, I you, you mimic my 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 hatred for your um, Nightbreed on this one. That was me. Yeah, Nightbreed I suppose. I mean, there was even that had a couple redeeming qualities, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I, I just couldn't. I couldn't find it here. It, I, it maybe it rubbed me wrong right from the beginning, and I was just unwilling to find something that I liked in it. But I don't know where I'm going with this. It was garbage. I hated it. All right, so everyone should be ashamed. <laughs> so, how many uh, one-eyed, one, how, how many one-eyed willies would you give this <laughs> out of out of 10, how many out of pieces 10? of pieces of eight? Okay, uh, out of ten, you get one for the cinematography. Mm-hmm. You get one for sloth mm-hmm. music. Yeah, it was okay. Dun, dun, I, I don't dun, think you get one dun, for dun. that. Um, good enough. I, I give it two out of ten. Two you, out of ten. It's yeah, good enough. Laura, how many? One-eyed willies, do you give it? <laughs> or infernos, or eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. One-eyed willies. All right. What, what was the old rhyme? Six was it? Sixteen men in a dead man's chest. Mm-hmm. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. I will give it thirteen out of sixteen men in a dead man's chest. Okay. Um. I'll. 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 It's one that I really like. I'll but give. That's mostly nostalgia. Okay. On on a nostalgia scale, I'll give it. Uh, a strong eight out of ten one-eyed willies. On uh, technical, I'll give it a nine, and on everything else, I'll give it a, a decent seven out of ten. I think I'm content to drag that average down. <laughs> 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 so that's a lot of dicks, guys. <laughs> a lot of dicks. Uh, I did like the booby traps. Also, the booby traps were booty pretty traps. Cool. The booty traps were pretty cool throughout yeah. the whole movie. Why yeah. can't the Asian kid say it right? His dad speaks the the language just fine. Actually, what his the dad fuck? didn't. No, his in dad, the in the, the actor, movie he did. The actor didn't speak a lick of it. 
in the movie he did yeah. just fine mm-hmm. see that was the kind of thing where i was just like why the kid did the why? kid spoke it fluently and that scene where the kid is saying oh uh, i love you dad yeah the yeah, kid it's... was speaking chinese and the actor had no idea what the kid was saying <laughs> It's like me playing PUBG on a fucking Eurasian <laughs> server. It's just awful. <laughs> All right. I All right. think we should take this to a break. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a break. And then when we come back, Matthew is going to run through his, uh, his I scenario. I will do no such thing. <laughs> All right. We'll be back in a little bit. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If uh, (laughs) if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, They also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, If you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. So as you can probably tell, there are a few things I didn't like about this movie. A few moments that... A few? Slightly didn't connect with me. I, I don't I, think I quite got that impression. I'm well, surprised. Maybe, maybe Regale I'll, us again with I'll, how I'll much try and you didn't express like myself better. Um, <laughs> however, I do think this has a lot of gaming potential because it, it starts with a group. Um, Ends with a group. Thank you for bringing up the timeline, Dusty. I'll be sure to return the favor in a future podcast. Um, no, I mean, you, you have a group uh, that comes together and overcomes these problems in a very kitty way. They have unrealistic, but still special skills that that they can use uh, one of them speaks various languages one of them is an inventor uh one of them is apparently good with the ladies despite his braces um there's 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 things you can use one of them has superhuman powers one's um, a klutz naturally and just yeah, gracefully and breaks things and helps things move along yeah the, a plot mover lucky yes <laughs> but um the one of my main points of disconnect was that at the end with the 49 houses not 50 because he was able to save his house. But the rest of the houses, 49 other houses, still in jeopardy. Their neighbors' houses. No, not that I'm aware of. Oh, are they going to build a country club on one lot in the no, middle of no, all those no, other the houses? Gems, the gems were saved all of the goondocks. That's not enough. That handful was certainly not enough. Well, that's enough. the yeah. impression you get from the yeah. movie, that those gems are saving the entire you know neighborhood. Eh, I didn't get that impression. I, I got that their house was safe. Was I wrong? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he was I, the only one with papers. Yeah. 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 Anyway, right, yeah. so there's, you know, a couple billion dollars in gold bullion and rare gems and priceless artifacts sailing away. And they're all just waving a goodbye because of their attachment to uh, One-Eyed Willie. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll let him go in style. See, that doesn't really work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really like that. For me either. Yeah. So I, I thought, what else? What is that money? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I wrote a little adventure based on that. It's called... Red Goon or Red Goontober. <laughs> so instead of blithely allowing a boat full of gold to sail away into the sunset, the Goonies come to their senses and give chase in a small powerboat intent on reclaiming their prize. Uh, what they don't know is that the Russian Akula sub, Bobesi, which means Goonie Bird in Russian, <laughs> is just offshore. I and- love it this already. Yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, is just offshore and has learned about the treasure via the the local news reporter who was sending it out live, if you remember from the ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're monitoring those reports. Uh, it is now moving to intercept the treasure-laden pirate ship. Uh, the Goonies will reach the boat first. They have a way to steam. And load up onto balloons and gems. And just as they're about to leave, the Russian sub surfaces. I want to see this as a movie already. One-Eyed Willie love traps, and there are plenty of old materials on board, which apparently, despite the passage of time and sea air, still work perfectly. Like, these are the best rope ever. But they had dust rising up from them. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Russians can't bring their full might against the uh, the ancient frigate for fear of, of sinking her, so they actually have to board it. Mm-hmm. So you have a chance for the, the trap maker and his friends to have a full-on... Macaulay Culkin-esque uh, trapping of... Home Alone only at sea. Yeah. 
uh, encounter with these Russians. They have enough time to to pull it together if they want. So how do we bring the Fratellis back in? We don't. We let them oh go gracefully God. into the night. Okay. <laughs> now, fuck them. Um, so gotta, I, I really did like his escape. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Just hang in. It's like, by the way, I'm not really dead. What? Punch. <laughs> That's, that is a straight up gamer move. That was Come all on. right. <laughs> but I, I think that would be interesting because I'm looking forward to seeing the Goonies die in the hands of a Russian gulag prison. I mean, uh, no, I think it would be brought a fun it down adventure. there, man. Wow. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm like watching Laura over here. It's like you can see like you're killing one of her favorite movies. <laughs> just like slowly I'm, I'm, I'm stabbing sorry. it till it dies. Um, but I, I do think uh, I do think it's a very gameable world with a with an emphasis on preparation and traps. You you have to to set your stage very well. But I mean, you're, you're able to do that in this world because one man after killing everyone else used their body parts to make an intricate series of traps. And lift giant rocks. So, I mean, it's very doable in very little time, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I want to say I saw another movie where kids make traps, and I can't remember what the fuck it was. No. It was Home Alone. It was Lord of the Flies. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Killed yeah, Goonies turned Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Oh, that would be the third one where they get stuck on the ship. They, they commandeer they the sub. Yeah. With all this <laughs> oh, loot. Oh, my God. And then they start killing each other. <laughs> So does Chunk become Piggy at that, that point? I'll pay. <laughs> I'll play the shit yeah. out of that one. Oh, God. Uh, the the reason I, I, I chose to do it this way is because right. this was actually at the height of the Cold War where there were Russian subs sniffing around every port. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I thought that would work out well. Yeah. And that's what I got for it. I, I like it. It's it's nice, despite how, you know, hatred and vitriol you have for this, you know, sudden movie. I, I'll turn in good work, whether I like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end, you just want to have them tortured and die. Yeah, yeah. maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so if we were to if we were to recap before we get into the into the gaming aspect, if we were to uh, recast this today, who would who would y'all recast as the Goonies? Whatever B-list actors are looking for work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would just go look at the whoever was playing in the movie It and cast them as the Goonies. <laughs> Yeah, I, who, I would can just, I get for cheap? I would yeah. just take the cast from uh, Stranger Things. Uh, no yeah, longer yeah. cheap. Yeah. Well, did you? I know you're not mining this kind of stuff anymore, but do you know what the budget on that was? Uh, 19 million. That seems about right. Yeah, and it got nine. <laughs> Gosh, I'm so shocked. <laughs> I, I actually, I am going to start mining that stuff again because I, I, as much as I, I want to be organic and coming up. I don't want to just be like bullet point list as we talk. I just. I, I do want to have that. I do like again. to know if a movie is a su success or not. Well, this one became one of those cult movies where it made the money back in DVDs and, and rentals, but in box office, no, it, it did not. Even with the names, you know, Spielberg and, and so Don. I can't imagine it, why. I'm going to stab you. I have a bigger knife. I don't care. <laughs> it's not how big your knife is. It's how you wield it. That's what girls keep telling me. About. <laughs> I know. I walked into that one. <laughs> you can borrow my knife. <laughs> it's a big one, apparently. So this episode, this whole thing is going in the gag reel. If we're going to game this. Yeah. I don't think it needs to be a skill-based system because the kids didn't really have any skill. Each one of them had, like, their thing, and that was it. Like, I'm the science kid. You basically really just have a fucking index card that says, I'm the science kid. And that's your character sheet. And, uh, it, it, but my shit fails all the time. So there is, you know, we, we talked about this on the it episode about how difficult it is to play kids, playing kids in a game. If you're going to play a serious game, it's a lot tougher. If you're going to play a completely unrealistic, fantastical, physics breaking adventure like goonies then you don't really have to think about it so hard you can really just do anything and role-playing advice is very simple just you know go wild these kids were basically written by adults so they were doing unrealistic things so this, this wasn't really a lot a logically child-driven movie like you mentioned stand by me like stand by me was a movie that was definitely more about kids reacting the way that kids would react to, yeah agreed to severe it to, to severe stimuli in their lives whereas this was okay this crazy thing is happening let's go to an adventure Woo! and with that you don't really need to think about it so much any of us could just sit down and play a game like this oh i'm i'm a i'm a 13 year old i'm going on an adventure okay cool i don't really need to get deep 
into my child brain or anything for the fucking Goonies. It's called the Goonies. I mean, it's... It sounds like highbrow yeah. cinema to me with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with something like this, I would think that we wouldn't really have the same issues that we had with it dealing with child trauma. You know, the, the, no, the kids never got hurt. No, there was, no, there was no trauma in this there movie was no at all. Trauma. There were, what, two guns and they were only ever used for like special effects. I, did I don't think anyone ever shot a gun at a kid. No, no, they did. Yeah, the Fratelli shot at them going up, going up through the uh, to the uh, to the piano scene. They got shot. Mm-hmm. Well, the the Italian I, opera singer shot it in the air, and then Joey yeah, Pants so shot it sh- at them. He raised it, and then they moved, and then he went, "Damn!" He didn't no, no, he fired. No, at. he got shot at Data. No. The, Data was shot at. It was yeah. it was just like near his head. Really? Yeah. He had to. I remember he had to duck seeing for it. one last night when I was watching it. Specifically, when that platform was going up, and one of the Fratellis is raising the gun, and he's about to fire, and the platform goes up. Yeah, and he pulls his gun away. And he pulls his gun. Yeah, away. but before that, when they were when they okay. were on the uh, just before they crossed the log, when he slipped and and hit his hit his junk really hard, he pointed the gun at Data and fired it, and it almost hit him in the head. Well, we all remember Spielberg was all about guns and kids because uh, <laughs> ET. E. We remember the original E.T. where there were guns. Mm -hmm. But still, the kids weren't really in danger in this kind of thing. Like, you would want to play a game where... I think they were in danger the whole time. This was a farce, is what you're saying. And I agree. what I'm saying. If I were going to play a game like this, I wouldn't want to play a game with hit points or death. Yeah. I want to play a game where ultimately the kids are going to win. It simply matters how well you win. Or the kids might lose, but losing doesn't involve death or yeah. suffering or you might get a scrape oh i bruised i got a boo-boo yeah but you won't get anything that you, you, you won't get lose tied up limb. in the basement yeah but, yeah but you'll chunk, get tied up in the basement that's a that's a negative consequence yeah. of something but yeah. chunk was going to lose like his hand no he wasn't he came pretty damn close but he wasn't it what was saved, never him, actually what saved him was the, was the bats the blender. It what was saved like him were inches. the bats coming out of the of the fireplace. That's something that you narrate that way. You know that that's never going to happen. What? So, okay, let me start over. There's a game called Apocalypse World, and I've mentioned it before. Mm-hmm. Now, Apocalypse World is a really fucking cool system where you have two six-sided dice. First off, the game master never rolls dice. It's always on the players because the players bring their own consequences. The consequences are always based on the character's actions. You roll two dice. You add them together. If it is six or lower like this, then you're fucked. The GM just gets to say what happens. There's no limit to what the GM can do. It's all in the fiction that you've established. If you have a seven to nine, you get some, but you give some. You get a passing victory, but you also lose something in the process. And finally, if you get a 10 or higher, overwhelming success, you get everything that you wanted and then some. But the stakes are whatever you want agree them to be for a game like this you're going to come to it knowing that you're never going to get your hand cut off now you might roll chunk rolled a six and he got put in a situation but the end result of that situation wasn't that he got his hand cut off it was that he got tied up in the basement it would have been a better movie if he did blood comes (laughs) shooting out of the hole chunk falls back screaming and matthew's interest in the movie gradually returns i mean yeah, Sorry. but then we have that whole <laughs> dark conversation that we had with it, where it was kids in danger, and we all felt bad about it. It's a little different than Goonies. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Junk got to hang out with the corpse for a while. Yeah, that's fucked. Up. I Chunk wanted, kept fucking up. I wanted to know bad. the story behind the corpse. I didn't care. Mm. Probably a there, policeman that was, or an investigator looking for the for them. There, there was a story behind him, and. I don't remember it now that you bring it up, but I remember some time ago, I was like, who the fuck is this corpse? And then yeah. I paused it and looked it up and it's like, oh yeah, they mention, or there's like a news article or something. I think he was like a, an informant or somebody okay. that came looking for them prior and found them at the house. And that's why they were trying to pack up and get out of the house. Oh, okay. Again, it's, it's Spielberg magic. It doesn't always have to make sense. Yeah. With you. <laughs> <laughs> Rough. Anyway. For a game like this, I would want to do something where it's less about like what your skills say you can do and more about creative explanation of things. Like, all right, cool. Well, you rolled a seven. So, unfortunately, 
you do trigger the trap, but there's just enough time for your group to get away. And it grabs your coat. Your and it coat grabs gets, your yeah. coat. You, oh, well, you roll a set. They keep rolling in the middle right there because they keep having to give and they keep having to get a little bit for every my every every step that they take forward. There's another step. That That's an interesting back. mechanic like, for movies because it explains a lot. Like when he's going 35 miles an hour on a kid's bike, he mm-hmm. just loses the bike. He rolled good enough not to die and have all his skin and bones scraped yeah. away. But yeah, he loses the, the little girl's bike and has to mow lawns for the next 10 years. Because apparently guess. inner tubes take what three hundred houses, three hundred and seventy some. Yeah, yeah. So lawns. he's he'll be mowing lawns for the rest of his life, but he gets to live. <laughs> when inner tubes even then were like what five bucks per? Yeah. Or less. It was less. Yeah, yeah. They're ridiculously cheap. They're ridiculously cheap now. So unless you got imagine how tubeless cheap tires, they were. and I don't know if those were a no. thing in no. in the eighties. Okay, no. He had weird ass shitty inner tube too <laughs> that deflated as soon as you took the cap off. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Three hundred lawns for that for a game of base on kids on a magical well, not quite magical, but basically a magical adventure. There's no supernatural elements in the movie, but it's a magical adventure. The the, the magic is them not dying. The magic is them not dying. It's a fantasy. Okay. It is yeah. it's a fantasy. And for something like that, I'd want to play a game where death isn't on the table. We're all basically like, look, we're going to play a game. We're going to have some kids. We're going to go an adventure. You might not succeed at this adventure, but don't worry. You don't have to deal. You don't, we don't need to sit here and role play one of you dying. And then your kids having to deal with the trauma of your buddy dying in front of them because that's a different movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a few ideas. Okay of games that I, I would run for this. First off, is any of the Apocalypse World games, but mainly just take the basic game Apocalypse World, remove the characters, remove the classes, and just use the core two six dice and have a pickup game where we're just kids in an adventure. We have two dice. You have a thing you're good at and a thing you're bad at. The thing you're good at gives you a plus two. The thing you're bad at gives you a minus two. So data. Mm-hmm. Good at adventures. Also, bad at inventions so you could wait like, play that however you want whenever it comes into play like okay well i'm going to use my plus two but the next time i roll i got to use the minus two kind of thing so you as a character use a player get the choice am i going to be good at this one and bad at the next one or bad at this one and good at the next one kind of thing? yeah then i don't i don't really know what mikey's skill was mikey was just kind of a chode but no, Mikey he was he, the he, leader. He he yeah. had persuasion out the ass. Persuasion, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. What was he? Ba- he was asthmatic. Yeah, right. yeah. So good at persuasion, bad, bad at, at running, doing anything <laughs> physical. Yeah. <laughs> Mouth, good at. He's bilingual, so he can. But that only, read that only he's good at he, one he's intimidation. He, the, he read that. He read the map a couple times and flipped over and was able to read the top of the music. All right, bilingual. But cannot read music. Anything else? What, what uh, anything else have you been good at? Pissing I, off everybody. I'm trying to think of the right word here. <laughs> Scaring hardworking day laborers. I don't know. <laughs> I again, I think maybe I, I no, not so much persuasion, but um, intimidation. No showmanship. All right, so his bad. He he's bad at keeping his cool. Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad, bad at keeping his cool or bad at reputation, maybe mm-hmm. something like that. Okay, who else we got? Chunk. Is there anything he's good at? Anything? He can sniff out food like Story a storytelling. <laughs> storytelling. Story okay. Yeah, he's good at lying. Yes, right? beguile. He's, he's good at beguilement. Beguile? But he's got the yeah. shittiest luck. Yeah, the, yeah. He just always ends up in but the wrong place at the wrong time. He is also the ferret of the group. He's the, oh, shiny! I mean, look at the ice cream and look at every, everything that he was... Ooh, he did. Yeah. a Pepsi! Yeah. yeah, everything distracted him. Oh, and it was oh dangerous. product placement. And it put everybody in <laughs> <Fuck> danger. <sakes. laughs> he was Kodo and Poto from Beastmaster. <laughs> yeah, so we got the core four kids. Everybody mm. else is kind of like ancillary to the group. We're really focusing on that core group of four. And each one of them would have a thing that they're good at, a thing that they're bad at, and we just go from there. And you just take two dice, start mm-hmm. playing. GM doesn't even ever have to roll any dice. The GM's like, all right, this thing is happening. Roll your dice. And uh, you roll 10 or higher. Something really good and better happens, and that creates story. Seven to nine, something good happens, but something bad happens, and that creates story. And then finally, roll a six or less, something terrible happens, and that creates story. And you have a game that runs itself. Yeah, I like that mechanic. Mm-hmm. 
There's another game that I'm going to mention because I kickstarted it. It is literally called Kids on Bikes. <laughs> I think you've mentioned this one before. It is the role playing game of 1980s kid adventures. Okay. Mm hmm. I kickstarted it. Yeah. I have a pre-release edition, but my rule with kickstarting games or beta testing, I never read it until it's done. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm like super invested in it and it's like the thing that I want tattooed on my body kind of investment. Generally, if it's a game that I feel that sort of came out of some nostalgic spike as of the last two years ago, say thanks to Stranger Things, mm -hmm. I'm just, oh, I'll wait till I have the book in my hands and then I'll read it. So I yeah. can't comment on it i don't know if it's any good i've heard that it's a lot of fun it's got really cool art but it's literally called kids on bikes the rpg this is kids on bikes yeah this is this is that kind of game the one that i wanted to talk about the most is one that i've mentioned before it is called tales from the loop so this is like a super special uh limited edition version that i have from a kickstarter it is a role-playing game about kids on an adventure, and it takes place either in some town in Sweden or some town in Arizona, but it has rules on how you can modify things to fit your own world. I mentioned this when we talked about it because it has that kind of kids dealing with a supernatural element, but the core mechanic is just a handful of D6s you have to push yourself pretty hard to get successes over what you would normally roll on the dice. And kids are the main characters. My God, I had that stereo. I think I had that exact yeah, model. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> this book is chock full of 1980s nostalgia, but it is based on a 1980s that never was from the art of a fellow whose name I am not even going to try to remember right now, but uh, I'll, I'll add it in the show notes. But you, you, you play a stereotype of a child from the 80s, and you go on a magical adventure. Simon Stalinhag? Stalinhag. And the kids, uh, you basically pick an archetype, and as mentioned before, they, it's the kind of a game where the kid's death is never on the line. You can fail the mission. Oh, yeah, so here we go. We got the bookworm. We have the computer geek. You know, and this is... This is the 1980s mm -hmm. computer game. I saw that. That yeah. massive Commodore. The hick, the jock, the popular kid, the rocker, the troublemaker, mouth, the weirdo. It's missing the fat kid, but it, it didn't want to be, you know. I don't think anyone wants. Nobody yeah. wants to be. Nobody thing. wants to be him. <laughs> I what I like is it. that kid's death is never on the line in this game. Uh -huh. Yeah. Kids can take wounds. But if it ever reaches the point where death is imminent, the GM is pushed towards coming towards a different solution. Right. Because this is not the kind of game where a kid is going to die. Yeah, the art's really good. I think it could work very well. Either that or even Little Fears, which we talked about. We just take out all the scary bits. I wanted Little Fears. <laughs> but no that was just because I wanted the kids to hurt. <laughs> You have problems, man. <laughs> nope. You're not we'll the first little to notice fears. that. <laughs> yeah. But but at its core, take out all the uh, weird, horrific things. Little Fears actually has a cool system. And that whole character sheet of like things, how you build out your character. I am good at this. These are things I like about myself. And these are things I don't like about myself. That's a really cool way to build a character yeah. sheet about a kid. Even if you're not going to send them to a world of unimaginable horror... You can still take that child and send it on an adventure using that system. Yeah. So what is the name of this again? This game is called Tales from the Loop. Okay. And it was kickstarted a couple years ago by Free League or the Free League. Now, they've made a number of games that all use the same mechanic, which is a handful of six-sided dice, and you count successes based on sixes. Right. It's a system that you, by default, aren't actually going to succeed all that often, but it has a mechanic where you have to push yourself harder. And by pushing, you get more successes, but you also put yourself at risk. Very similar to the whole seven to nine thing that I was talking about with Apocalypse World. Okay. But this game and Kids on Bikes and a few others. So when Stranger Things became popular, there was the surge of nostalgia informed kind of games that just sort of popped 
started popping up and Kickstarters started appearing for these games for people wanting to capitalize on that whole, oh, you guys like Stranger Things? Well, here's a role-playing game. So you can play Stranger Things. And there was like 10 of them out there, I think. I'm sorry. I don't remember the names of all of them. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there is one even based on the Apocalypse World Engine. I don't know the name of it. It would probably be great for Goonies. Okay, cool. All right, so it's uh, Tales from the Loop, and that was Goonies. Hey, you guys. No, no. (laughs) (laughs) Though I was wondering where that came from, so now I know. Mm -hmm. To my horror. (laughs) I haven't. I never saw it. That's right. I never saw it, and I never will again, because awful. Kind of like me with Nightbreed. That's okay. I didn't bring Nightbreed to the table. Neither did I. Sam's dying over here. (laughs) (laughs) So what they say when they mean the truth hurts. (laughs) All right. So we have the Goonies. And as Matthew just said, uh, Nathaniel brought up uh, Tales from the Loop. But I would also recommend Kids on Bikes. I can't. I've never played it. Mm -hmm. I've heard good things about it. It's Kids on Bikes. I mean, how... More well, the, on the, point. The, the bike is be. like the first freedom that a kid gets. Yeah, you know, it's it's like their their first. A bike is a kid's first adventure, so that's that's a really good thing to it's to figure out because motorcycle. yeah, that that's how you can get out into the world and see things without your parents driving you around. So that makes sense as an adventure platform. Yeah, that's where it all starts. Yeah, Once kids hop on a bike, they ride around the corner into adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. I remember my first bike. I got into a lot of trouble. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> I had to run a couple of times. I was a good kid. Yeah, okay. Me too. I was. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. I did stupid things on my bike. I played a lot of D&D. <laughs> uh, yeah. All anyway. Right. All right. Well, thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. I was Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And Laura. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way. If you like what you've heard, or even if you didn't, please leave us a review and let us know. Got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about? Drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. Have Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week. Phenomenon, <laughs>